Let's talk about what we've got going on at Boeing. And, Mike, this is a company where the management of it needs to be fired. <laughs> I, I, I can't put it any more clearly than that. Yeah. The, the board of directors, the C-suite, and probably one or two levels of management below that all need to get sent somewhere else, preferably not on a Boeing plane because you have to make sure that the job gets done. They need to go somewhere else. This is a company, and, and here's why I'm so passionate about this. First, I love aviation. I think that aviation is just one of the – it still is a marvel to me because it's something that we've only been doing for 100 years or so, and I, I just find it remarkable that in that 100 years we've gotten to the point where you can fly 3,000 miles away for a few hundred bucks – and the worst thing that usually happens is that you get delayed by 30 to 40 minutes, occasionally maybe by a day because of weather or maintenance or something like that. There has not been, I mean, you talk about the safety record of airlines, and it is absolutely fantastic over the last 20 years. I don't think, aside from uh, the incident with, uh, was it Southwest that had the, the person who died on the flight when they had an uncontained engine failure a couple of years ago? Uh I don't recall that, actually. I, I can't remember, but th there's basically only been, like, one death on commercial U.S. airplanes in the last 20 years. And what bothers me in particular about where Boeing is now is this was this was a company that was the crown jewel of U.S. industry for the 20th century. Their quality, their safety, their innovation was unparalleled. There was no one who did it better than Boeing. And now, quite honestly, they're a laughing stock that doesn't really seem to care about safety very much. And I, I want to talk about just how bad it's gotten there. First, there was a report from the Seattle Times yesterday by Dominic Gates, who is an aerospace reporter. That's right. Boeing is so big in Seattle that the Seattle Times has an aerospace reporter. I need to, like, that's, that's how big Boeing is. I'm going to quote here. The fuselage panel that blew off an Alaska Airlines jet earlier this month was removed for repair and then reinstalled improperly by Boeing mechanics on the Renton final assembly line. A person familiar with the details of the work told the Seattle Times. I'm going to cut forward a little bit further. The self-described Boeing insider said the company records show four bolts that prevent the door plug from sliding up off the door frame. Uh, stop pads that, that take the pressurization loads in flight were not installed when Boeing delivered the airplane, the whistleblower stated. Our own records reflect this. So the question that had been lingering out there was, there's a company called Spirit Aero Systems, which is based out of Wichita, which is where the fuselage for the, the 737 MAX is assembled. They make this piece, and the question was, did they mess up or did Boeing mess up? And according to this report from the Seattle Times that quotes a Boeing whistleblower, Boeing messed up. Like, they, they didn't put the bolts in that hold this door plug into the airplane. And just furthermore... We are first hearing about the fact that Boeing was the one that installed this door and took it off and reinstalled it from the Seattle Times rather than Boeing. So, again, it's a whistleblower. There have been some confirmation that the guy knows what he's, the guy or, or woman knows what they're talking about because they were able to accurately describe the computer systems that Boeing used to track these records. Um, so, you know, we'll see if this turns out to be true. But, again, how are we hearing about this? Not from the FAA, not from Boeing, not from one of the airlines themselves, but from a whistleblower talking to the Seattle Times now, what, three weeks after the event? Yeah, well, I wouldn't expect to hear it from the FAA because like, they have a whole investigative process, but sure. Boeing obviously knows, and they're just trying to make it so that they don't get sued, which honestly, they should, because quite honestly, they suck right now. I, I can't describe how upset I am about this, and here's where it's gotten to. CNBC report from yesterday. The F Federal Administration Aviation has boots on the ground at the 737 MAX factory and will keep them there until the agency is convinced that the manufacturer's quality control system is working, FAA Administrator Mike Whitaker told CNBC. Mike, Boeing needs a nanny because they're not trusted to build planes the right way today. The, the, the FAA does not do this. They don't, they don't go around and say, yes, we're going to have some, like, someone watch you build airplanes. No, it's not how they do it. This is the last thing they want to be doing, and it shows how desperate the agency is to try to fix things there. Part of the reason why is because there's been so much consolidation in the U.S. aviation industry that there's no one else in the United States that makes commercial airplanes anymore. 
which, oh, by the way, might be a little problem for the whole antitrust thing, but that's neither here nor there after Boeing's acquisition of McDonnell Douglas about 20 years ago. So we're in a pickle here where Boeing's the only company in the U.S. that makes this stuff because we've kind of failed to, you know, properly build an antitrust infrastructure that, you know, might want two companies to make airplanes in the U.S. Could be kind of nice. You know, just just a little thought. And then on top of that, you now have the FAA literally acting as a babysitter for Boeing employees because they can't be trusted to build airplanes the right way on their own. They so far have a backlog of more than 4,300 undelivered 737s, and you can bet that pretty much every airline out there is... They don't have many other options because it's either Boeing or Airbus in terms of where they go to, and you can bet that Airbus has just as long of a line to get planes, and they'll have to go to the back of it if they choose to do so. But even the United Airlines CFO is saying, hey, we have to now prepare for the fact that we might not be able to get, was it the MAX 10, uh, I think that they were referring to there, but like we have to make plans without that. The FAA is limiting Boeing's production, okay? They're basically saying, look, you're not allowed to expand your production line until we figure out if you guys are actually building these planes decently. On top of that, you can't build any new models like the MAX 10. Like, no, we don't trust you to do this. And quite honestly, the C-suite and the board of directors, they need to either resign or be pushed out immediately because they are not capable of running this company. They were the people that were in place during all of the failures of the MAX three and four years ago when you had two separate crashes within a span of a few months, uh, one of which was, again, a system that they thought was okay but wasn't the second. They knew the system was not working, and they basically said, yeah, everything's fine, like, keep flying them. And then you had a second crash that killed another 100-plus people. And quite honestly, at this point, Those people need to be let go from Boeing because they are not capable stewards of one of the great American companies that exists. And I'd honestly like to see them tried for manslaughter because of how they handled those initial crashes with the Max. Well, that's not going to happen, Chuck. But it it, it might not, but it's like they killed people through their negligence. That's what I got. It is uh, a tremendous disappointment of American industry, and there's no, beyond that, getting rid of all these people does not do anything to really guarantee an improved safety strategy. Can't be worse. Uh, And, um, no, it can't be much worse, uh, but this comes back to a big theme that we have in the United States, which is don't allow companies to have a monopoly. Because, you know, one, the core piece of this all is now there's nowhere else to go. Uh, we don't have a competitor for you know, United to go turn to and say, hey, we'll buy their planes instead. But two, it breeds this type of behavior. It bre- having no competition breeds the type of behavior where you cut corners, you don't make the proper updates, you push through planes that aren't truly safe, because where else are your customers going to go? So it's, uh, it's very bad at Boeing right now. And, again, the, the reason why you end up with failures in terms of safety and maintenance on planes is because the leadership is not concerned with them. And if you actually had leadership that prioritized that over trying to get as many planes out the door as quickly as possible, you wouldn't have these issues. And, and we know this, by the way, because Boeing, for the, the 20th century, was the gold standard. It was the pinnacle of... Do it right, make our planes safe, make them work perfectly, and everything else will take care of itself. And that has changed in the last 20 years there, and it's gotten us to this point. And it's just, it's horribly disappointing to me as an aviation enthusiast. It's horribly disappointing to me as a fan of U.S. business. And it's horribly disappointing to me as a person that actually cares about the safety of people flying. And that's why I'm so upset about this is just because it like it's it's one thing if the company that makes fidget spinners has a defect in them. Whoop-de-doo, it flies off and, you know, it breaks a lamp. This is different. 